Hey guys, if we haven't met, my name is Chelsea. I want to share with you a story, a true story that happened with me and my husband a few years ago because it represents how God knows what is happening in our lives. He knows what's happening in your life and he cares about it. And this was like a little surprise signs and wonder moment because it completely defied what we know of the laws of nature and science. It was not something that we could explain. There was on our dresser in our bedroom, a cross of light that appeared. It did not make any sense to us. Normally the light comes in through the blinds and creates these slanted lines on the wall. That's always how it's been. Ever since we've lived there for seven years. It has never condensed into the shape of anything, much less a cross, since we've lived there before this experience or after. And when it happened, we jumped out of bed and we were inspecting all around it. It seemed like it was sitting on the dresser. It was very strange. I put my hand on it. I was trying to look for the source of light. I went to the blinds. All of the blinds were facing downward. It literally didn't make any sense to us. None of the blinds were skewed or affected in any way. This really it boiled down to what was God trying to say to us in that moment? And we knew exactly what it was uh, because of what was going on. Here's the story. My husband at the time had a job. We knew it was going to be temporary, but he was really struggling to find work anywhere else. This job was miserable. I don't know if you've ever had a job that was so miserable. It would just eat at your core day after day. It was a toxic work environment from the boss to the relationship with the other employees and absolutely miserable. He was trying not to complain about it. It was really testing him, but he had to get out and find a job that better suited his skills. And so we put the resumes out there and it seemed like nothing was hiring at the time. But then Lockheed, Har Lockheed Martin opened a position and this seemed like it was the job. Like to work at Lockheed Martin, the prestige of it, I mean, is pretty cool. The paychecks would be really great. And we have a neighbor who works there who said, hey man, you'd be great for this job. Let me write you a recommendation letter. My husband went to the interview wearing a new suit, new shoes, like he was pulling out all the stops. He wanted this job and the interview went really well. So he walked out of it saying, I did the best that I can do. I'm putting it in God's hands now and they'll, Lockheed Martin will decide whether or not I get the job. So they told him when he left the interview, we'll give you a call whether you get it or not. For the next few days, we were on the edge of our seats waiting for this job. We were praying for this job. We were actually experiencing so much hope that our moods were lifted. And uh, then a week goes by and then two weeks. And we, at this point, we're saying like, did they say they would call you if you don't get the job? Because it would be great for us just to be released from this agony. It used to be anticipation and now it's just kind of like the air deflated from our balloons and we were now, we the hope wasn't really there. And um, so after two weeks, I wake up and open my eyes in the morning and that's when I see the cross on the dresser. And that's, I jump out of bed and when I had opened my eyes, it was like I was just waking up but my first thought on my mind was about the Lockheed Martin job and, and my husband too. So he says, what is God trying to say to us? Like, am I gonna get the job today? <laughs> it was funny because we both had this really intense, almost, like in our world, we would use the word premonition, but I think that it was really the spirit of prophecy that the Bible talks about. God's spirit was telling us Lockheed Martin was going to call that day. We just knew it was going to happen. The day before, we had lost pretty much all hope that they were going to call us. Today, when we saw the cross on the dresser, we knew that they were going to call us. But what was God saying by having a cross on the dresser? So we kind of slowed down the moment and asked God. And I was, 
hoping his voice would come booming down and tell us what it was what it meant but really we just had this very general basic it seems like knowing but it was really comforting that god was saying i am here with you and that's what his word says god is with us so if god is with us who can be against us but if God is with us and he knows the situation, he's in control. We suddenly had so much hope just because of that, that it almost didn't matter to us if he got the job or not. Like God is in control and we would rather it be that way. Anyway, so my husband goes to work and he called me twice before lunch just to like in eagerness, he's like, I keep thinking about this morning. I'm so excited. And I just can't stop thinking about how God who created everything, like knows our situation. We know that to an extent, but sometimes just really being aware of it will knock you off, knock your socks off or whatever. <laughs> so we, we are just thinking about this all day. And by lunchtime, my husband comes home and he tells me, guess what? Lockheed Martin called and he's got this big smile on his face and he opens up in his, ar his arms and he says, I didn't get the job. And we hugged each other. It was like, we were so like, okay, that's the answer then. It's no, we're not gonna get the job. If somebody had been walking by our house at that time and looked in through the window, they probably would have thought, oh, they just got some good news. That's how we responded to this message that he wasn't going to work at Lockheed Martin. And I'm telling you this because I wish I could always live with this perspective of we live in the kingdom of God. We can look so much around at the environment and the bad things that happen in our lives and the chaos and the destruction and the sin and the darkness and everything and think that we are just getting you know, knocked around and where is God in all of this? But to receive bad news and feel joy, that is living firmly planted in that moment, knowing that God is sovereign. I didn't know what the word sovereign meant at the time, but I do now. So I'll tell you, you probably already know it, but it's that God is in control of everything. He has the supreme authority, even when things look like to our eyes that they are going badly. Sometimes, even though we think, God, don't you want what's best for me? Why won't you give me the success that I desire? What he really wants is us. We need to walk in obedience that even when things aren't going the way we want them to, that we need to walk in obedience to him, not complaining about the situations that are, you know, affecting us and um, to continue to go to God with our problems and difficulties and be obedient to him, what his word says. So when we desire the things of God, he will give us the desires of our heart. When we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our heart, it says. And sometimes our heart desires things that are not the delight of the Lord, but we desire things that are of this world. And so our heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. And so sometimes when we don't get what we want and we can respond bitterly and and angrily and upset. And that's not walking in obedience to God. We need to check ourselves and say, okay, God, I want to delight myself in you. And things around us begin to transform. We start to see the world differently. And in that moment, we were seeing the world differently, which was, I, you know, whatever happens, it's going to be okay. God is ultimately in control and we are going to pursue him no matter what. Well, to end this story on a good note, we didn't know it at the time. A year later, we looked back and we said, wow, the events that unfolded after that show us that God had so many more steps planned out than we could even put into order ourselves. We simply didn't know what was going to happen in the future. My husband, a few weeks after this incident, was moved into another department. He ends up getting to work so close to home that he walks to work. He comes home for lunch every day. He doesn't have to drive 45 minutes in traffic every day to Lockheed Martin. But that's not where it ends. So many more things occurred that we realized 
that new job that he was moved into developed skill sets in him and gave him connections where now he's being he's able to apply that to having his own job working from home being his own boss and this is the beginning of a new adventure for us so this is what my husband like has always dreamed of doing and the things that happened because he didn't get the Lockheed Martin job just show that it would have been a waste of our energy and emotions to be really upset when he got the bad news about not getting a Lockheed Martin job. And I wonder how often we act out all upset and defeated and angry over bad news when God is like, I have so much better for you. Keep walking in obedience to me. Keep coming to my presence. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. He is sovereign. He is in control. And his truths in the Bible are reality. Regardless of when we recognize it or not, they still hold true. I hope that you're encouraged by this and um, I hope you have a good day.